Hey, this video is going to show you how to do the subassembly one of the Automoblox T9 car. The very first thing I'll just say quickly is make sure you have all of your uh, files, all the part files, all assembled in a common folder. And I would go ahead and do that for the entire Automoblox car right now. If you haven't done that already, you need to pause it, pause the video, take time, collect all the files off the LMS, get them all into the same folder. Okay, make sure you know exactly where everything is. Okay, if you don't have that organized, you're going to have trouble. Okay, so we're going to begin. We're going to do subassembly one, which is going to be the, the back of the truck, the bed. We need two axles, okay, one on each side, and then there's the one block socket that goes into the hole. I'm going to bring the bed in first. That's going to be our grounded piece, and then we'll get these other three pieces attached. So I'm going to come over here to Angel. I have already gone to a new and I chose an assembly, a standard assembly. Okay, and that's where I'm at right now. Uh, right here, we're going to place a component. If for some reason you have a different choice right there, like place from Content Center, Content Center or iLogic, just hit the little drop down to change to place. Okay, and I've got my folder. It already knows what I'm looking for. You may have to navigate to it. Okay, and I need to find the bed uh, right there. We're going to bring the, this piece in. All right, right here is where I'm going to right click, not left click on the first part. This is my base component, and I want it grounded. So I choose Place Grounded at the origin. And I'm going to right click and say OK. I'm not going to bring a second bed in. This might be a good little trick for you. If you guys didn't realize, this tool over here is called the Look At tool. And it will let me choose a flat surface, a plane, and it will rotate my part so that it is orthographically facing me. Because I think what I'd like to do is reorientate this and kind of redefine what my front is. So once I get a, a face looking at me so that it's calibrated here, okay, I'm going to make that the front. I'm going to right click on the view cube and say set current view as front. And then my top front right ISO, I can right click and say set this as my home view, fit to view. And that way, if I get things moved around, I can just hit the home button and kind of get it back to this view. Okay, let's go ahead and bring in two axles. Need to find my axle. There you go. Choose open. This time, I'm just going to left click, and I want two of them. So there's one, there's two, and I don't want three, so I right click and say OK. Okay, to attach the axle, to constrain it to the hole, I'm going to use I'm under assemble the constraint tool and perhaps I'll do them uh, each one a little differently so first I'll use the insert <clears throat> and I'm going to choose opposed I've got this hole and notice the vector is pointing out okay go ahead and choose that as my first geometry and I'm going to choose the um, get the vector that shows what would point in. Now the little tabs, those should be pointing out, okay, because that's meant to bend, you know, be able to squeeze in, in a little bit so that the wheels can come on and off. So this is the part that's going to go in. I chose a pose, so the arrows are going to go in opposite directions. Okay, so I want that arrow. Now don't be fast to click. Notice there's all these circles here I can choose. The circle that I choose right now, in addition to that vector, is going to pick what aligns to that face, that edge there. And so I actually want that circle right there, right? It's that face that I want to marry up. So whether it's the small one or the large one, I've got these concentric circles there. I just want to make sure I get one of those two. So I'm going to choose right here. Notice I've got my axis selected as well as a circle on the face that I'd like to marry up to mate to the outside of the passenger section okay so with that selected zoom out and go back over here and I'll hit apply and look at that okay now the other thing we're gonna fix is that on the product this is actually glued in and does not spin so I'm gonna show you how to get this axle to be stuck so that it doesn't spin and rotate okay to do that I'm going to choose Constrain, and I'm going to choose the Angle. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this little face here, okay, on that axle. 
we're going to make it be parallel to the back of the car. So I'm going to choose that face. I'm going to rotate this my view around so I can see the back of the automobile blocks. And I'm going to choose that. And those are two planes. There are three selections I need to make, though. I also need a reference vector. And it'll be based on that vector that Inventor will start to read, you know, between zero degrees, etc. And so I'm going to choose this vector right here, that edge. And right here I can adjust the angle. So I can say 90 degrees, notice how that rotated. I can say zero, that'll have it pointing up. I guess I could look at my automo blocks and really decide what angle it's at. I could even maybe come up with a funky angle, so it's rotated. Either, either way, I'll hit apply, close that. But now you'll see that this is stuck. I cannot rotate the axle anymore. So there's one axle down. Let's rotate around and let's work on the second one. Okay, so this time I, I had used the insert, so this time let's use the mate tool. You can actually use the mate tool again, and I'll do an oppose mate. Okay, and I'm going to get the axis of the hole, and then I need to look for the axis here. Make, be careful with your mouse, take time to make sure the axis is highlighted. Doesn't want to stay, I might need to. There you go. Okay, and this one's going to take hit apply I'll close that it's gonna take two so now that those are aligned this still moves in and out I did not get a kind of a secondary constraint uh, when I used um, the opposing mate so now what I want to do is find two surfaces that I can mate so that this won't go in and out and you see I, I'm gonna choose the outside of the automobile box and I'm gonna rotate this around and get the inside of that so I'll pull this out which constrain and I'll get the opposed mate I'm going to choose this, and then let's rotate around and get that face right there. Hit apply. And we can kind of rotate around back again so you can see this. Okay. I'm going to close this box, and look at that. So it's stuck, it's aligned, but it still spins. So to stop this spinning, let's do the same trick. We're going to constrain. We're going to use the angle tool, and I'm going to choose this face. It's a nice uh, plain flat face to choose and as a point of reference we are going to grab the back and then I need a reference vector so I'm going to just choose a vertical edge and again now based on that I can change my angle I can make it 90 you know I'm guessing that if I really look at my car that these slots are not all the same so you can just have fun with that hit apply and close and now you'll notice that it doesn't spin, so that acts as if it were glued in. All right, we got one last piece, and that is the uh, it's the one block socket, I believe, right? The subassembly one, two axles, and a one block socket. Yep. So let's place, let's find our one block socket. This piece right here, open. I only need one of them. I left click, right click, and say OK. Once you've got your one. All right, so. We're going to constrain this into place. Notice I'm not taking a lot of time to play around with the free rotate. I haven't actually used it once. Okay, I'm using my constrain tools to get this object to move into place. So I'd highly recommend that you really um, avoid the desire to play with that a lot. Okay, if you do, just use it very little. Okay, so we can see this is this this one block socket is going to face um, for right now your view kind of down and right. So it needs to flip up 90 degrees, and um, it really doesn't matter which one you start with. How about we go ahead and I'll get the the under what's the underside right now to mate to the back of this. So let's constrain. We'll use our opposed mate. I'm going to choose the back right in there. I'm going to grab the bottom corner so I can look from underneath, and I'm going to choose the bottom of this. Hit apply, and I'll close that. I close it so that now it doesn't think I'm making another selection and I can, in between each constraint, I can kind of grab it and see what happened. I can move it around, it helps me understand. Okay, now here's one that can be very helpful. Instead of free rotate, once you've created one constraint, okay, it sometimes is in a position that you can't really get to the edges you want. So I think I'm okay here, but the free move sometimes can be really helpful to kind of pull it out and just give you 
the ability to look at other parts of that shape that otherwise you're not seeing. But I wanted you to really understand this part better. Notice there's a little lip on here. I think a lot of us might have a tendency to want to constrain and use the oppose mate and grab this surface right here. But if I do that, well, let's just try it real quick. Okay, if I do that, so now let's look. Let's turn orthographically here. How well we're going to be able to see it, but but I should have an issue going on where the view cube's not wanting to cooperate. Something selected. There we go. Okay, um, it's not really letting me see that, but. But the tab is actually in the wood. And then if you look look down here, notice there's a gap right here. OK, do you see that? So the issue is I didn't choose the, the highest point of the green. So let's undo. I'm going to make sure I undid that. And I'm going to choose over here and look at what mates or constraints I have underneath my one block socket and the only one left is the first one I did so that's good all right but when I go to do the constraint and the impose mate I want to get this little lip that's the highest point that's what's going to touch the wood okay not that but this so I'm going to choose that and then I'm going to rotate so I can see from underneath and I want to get that surface of the wood. And you can see it's highlighted there through the green. Hit apply. I'm going to close that just so I can grab and move and understand. And now we're going to repeat the same process. I'll even I'll scoot this all the way out to the side. And I'm going to grab this side, this little lip, rotate around and get the inside of the wood there. So constrain, oppose mate again, get that little lip. And we're going to rotate, get the inside here. And that'll snap back into place. Hit apply, close. Notice I didn't get any errors. Nothing's conflicting. Um, we did show how to do that in the last video, though. So let's check that. Inspect, analyze interference. Um, let's we can check between how about that block and this piece and say okay. There were no interferences detected, so our dimensioning was spot on. That fit in. We don't have any interference. They're not you know getting in each other's way. We could repeat the same thing with um, the axle and the bed. And here we do have a little interference. Okay, and so that is scientific notation. That is a really, really small number. That's actually um, times 10 to the negative 4. That would become 0 0.0005, okay, um, cubic inches of volume, so ridiculously small. So what we have is a very, very, very subtle interference fit. So um, when that gets pushed in, it would just barely be making contact or touching. Okay, that's actually great. That's probably what they want. It's probably such a small interference fit that it would still spin. Okay, but just have a little bit of friction. Okay, so that's the inspect tool. I'll let you understand that. And you are done. You have done sub-assembly one. Great job.